Welcome to a quick uh, screencast showing how to configure a uh, WebSocket on a NAT server. This is actually a very brief introduction to get you up and running. It, it won't go into details on how to uh, configure more complex types of things. It's just simply a getting started type of thing. So without further ado, my name is Alberto Ricard. I'm the maintainer for the JavaScript uh, clients for NATs. And uh, let's see what we do. The first thing that we'll do is we'll actually create a server configuration. So we're going to uh, create a configuration here, which we're going to edit. And uh, for WebSockets, the only thing that we need is actually to have a WebSocket uh, directive in the configuration file. Um, the minimum setting that you need is actually a port. Uh, as in other NATS ports, they're all explicitly set except for the default uh, 4222. Um, for WebSocket, you'll typically want to match the port to the type of protocol that you're enabling. That will allow, um, if somebody specifies an URL to connect, to not have to specify the port if you do the proper thing. So for example, for the plain uh, WebSocket protocol, that would be port 80. For WSS, it'll be 443. In our case, we're going to be running locally, so I am going to set it to port 8080. Um, the NAT server is actually very security conscious, so if we have this uh, simple configuration as we have it, um, the NAT server will basically complain that uh, we are not using um, that we're not using TLS. So as you can see over there, it actually failed to start. To bypass this issue. There's a sec another directive over here, another property that is called no TLS, and we set that to true. When we do that, we're able to actually start. Whoops, I had one running already. Um, we were able to actually start the server, and the server will also print the warning message saying, hey, you know, you really shouldn't be using a WebSocket without TLS enabled. But for purposes of this demo, no TLS is great because it removes the complexity of having to generate certificates and to configure them. For the full configuration um, values that you can use, you can go to NATS.io, and if you type WebSocket here, you will get right to the uh, manual description of the um, documentation and if you see the configuration you'll see that there's very many different options that you can actually specify so take a look at that docs not nets io type websockets and you'll have that so now how do we actually know that our server is running well um let's write actually a little program that uses the websocket library uh for nats uh for that actually i'm going to do something unusual here i am going to go ahead and and use um, Dino. Dino is a new uh, runtime for JavaScript and TypeScript. And um, the cool thing about it is, is that it, it actually has a lot of libraries built in. There's nothing, there's no NPM. Most of the things that you actually need to write servers and clients, uh, uh, low level type things, file access, all that kind of stuff is all built in, right? So, um, installation is also very easy. We let's actually go through here through the installation. It simply goes over that, boom, and it's done. And if we do that, uh, we should be able to create a small TypeScript uh, file, and we're going to call it client. And we're going to import the the Nats uh, library for WebSockets. So I'm going to go to GitHub here. I'm going to go to the WebSocket library. Um, the library is normally distributed as an NPM package. You can see that we actually have an NPM bundle over here that you can actually just type. But because we're using Dino, Dino is able to actually access uh, code through an URL. Once it downloads a library, it'll keep it in cache until you manually reload it. So that actually makes it very convenient for doing very quick types of tests without having to install a lot of things. So the thing that we're interested in here 
is actually this mod ts file this is the entry point to the library and all we have to do to access it is copy the raw url where github is actually hosting it in the future we should be able to actually access uh, this library under dino x dino has a uh, you know third-party modules over here and like for example if you search for nats the nats client for dino is accessible right through through them um, so i'll make that easy easier in a future release for now let's actually just import the connect function that we need um, from the library and um, we're also going to need to have an encoder nats messages are binary uh, bytes so we'll need a way of converting those bytes um, uh, into uh, into strings or from strings into bytes depending on the direction that we want to go so for now let's actually create our nats connection here the process of creating a connection is asynchronous because it may take a while to actually do it dino supports top level uh, async code so all we simply need to do is is put an await on it and um, and away we go for the connection options we need to specify uh, the the server's property this is actually standard on all of the javascript clients and for the websocket clients you actually specify the the a full url typically you just do a host port but in the case of of the websocket client since the protocol could actually have meaning in terms of the port, um, I allow you to actually access uh, or specify it as a full URL. So in, in our case, the server is running again on the local host. And if I do this, we should be able to now create a subscription uh, to listen for messages. So we're going to subscribe. This is how we actually receive messages that other clients are publishing and uh, the the first uh, argument is going to be the subject where we want to actually get the message and then for uh, to process the uh, the messages that we get we need a function the function actually takes two arguments the first argument being an error if there was an error that actually happened the second one being the message so we're gonna simply uh, do whoops write and go uh, log and uh, we're going to use our fancy um, string codec which I actually didn't do over here let me actually put it over here con string codec string codec is a function that returns an encoder and uh, now what we do is we do um, decode and that's gonna be on the message message data and if we do that we should be able to, if I put that under a single quotes, we should be able to just have our first hello world type of program. Um, obviously, we need to receive some data unless somebody's actually sending uh, on my server, which they're not because I'm the only one here. We won't see anything. But what we're going to do here is actually do uh, encode. And, uh, and we do that. So now that we have Dino in here, running this doesn't require us to actually have TypeScript uh, to compile and all that kind of stuff. Dino can do all of that by itself. So all we really need to do is Dino run. And it, Dino is very uh, permissions conscious. So the uh, first option here uh, gives all permissions, meaning write files right to the network. So it's a shortcut because the library also has uh, code to or dependencies actually you know the websocket one doesn't so we should be able to maybe do that and simply run it over there and it should basically go ah no 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 uh, we have a, a typo here where we miss one thing and let's see run and it goes oh Ah, ID completion made me type the wrong thing. But if we do this now, hey, hello from Nats WebSockets. As you can see, the Dino implementation has a full W3C 
WebSocket implementation, so it'll run exactly the same as it does in the browser. So this is actually a really cool thing to be able to try a lot of code uh, to get things working without necessarily having to have the JavaScript loading into a browser and having the browser do all that kind of stuff. So lots of fun. I hope that you enjoyed this very brief uh, demo and uh, I will follow up with more sophisticated demos. For example, creating a React application using Nats so that you can uh, follow along and, and build your skills using Nats and WebSockets. Thank you much.